So there we got some cocky space manoeuvres. Not much use really in game, but they do demonstrate flight assist off and the amount of control you can get if you get your joystick set up right. And that's what this video is all about. Setting up the Thrustmaster T16000M to make your life a little bit easier. So let's get started with the target command center. It's a little bit daunting when you first see it. It's actually quite easy to use once you get familiar. And we're going to start with a new configuration. Give it a name. On this screen, you need to select the controllers you've got installed. So we're going to go with T16000M and a throttle. You then present it with this screen. On the left hand pane, you can see your hardware. And when you hover over the axis, it demonstrates on the left there which axis we're working on. So we've got pitch, roll, rudder, throttle, the same down there. We're only dealing with the analog controls, we're not dealing with any of the buttons on this screen. So we're going to start by having a look at the roll axis. So click the right hand arrow there. And you're presented with this graph. So if we just imagine this this vertical line here in the center is the joystick's mid position. When you move over to the left, to the furthest extent. So there, that is the left hand line there. And the right hand line is the other one over there. Okay. We look at the dead zones we can apply a center dead zone lower dead zone upper dead zone that actually means in this particular case this axis the roll that means the left hand and that is the right hand let's not worry about those for the minute now these sticks are excellent sticks but they're not exactly high precision pieces of equipment they're cheaply made they're plastic great internals but the central point there has got quite a lot of play on it. I've got two here. They're both different. That one's slightly better than that one. You can hear it. There's a lot of play in the mid position. So we're going to need to deal with that to make our life easier in game. So let's just take a look at it default. If we go next, run the configuration, pull up the joystick control panel, when you run the configuration the joystick turns into what was the t16000m into the thrustmaster virtual game controller that's the emulated version of it with the software running the profile running so just have a look at the properties there there's the axis uh, pitch and roll i pick up the joystick wiggle it about you can see it moving there and that gets interpreted into game we need to deal with that so let's just go back, click on the roll axis, apply a little bit of dead zone in the middle there, next, run configuration, and there it appears there, pick up the joystick again, no play at all, we're seeing a bit of pitch movement, because we haven't set up a dead zone for that, but Pretty much no play. Let's go back and do the same for pitch. Stop the profile, go back, click on pitch. We can see it's pitch because it shows you in the image. Again, put another bit of dead zone on. Next, run configuration. There it comes up there. Completely still. We don't want it too big because we, we just want enough. I happen to know that mine runs good at 10. I'm just picking up the bite there and it's moving it. Okay, pitch again. Nice, it's nice and stable. When you're sat in your chair and you're moving around and ducking and all this business, that and you're keeping, you think you're keeping your hands still, you're not. It's moving around because there's so much play. So that's how we deal with play. So if we put a lower and upper dead zone on, let's just put it into the mid position there. Okay, what this does, so you move over to the left, you're, you're on the dead zone, 
nothing happens until you hit this point and then it starts to move so you're only actually going to move the joystick a slight amount you're not going to move it all the way over you it's going to stop at maximum extent there so in effect it makes it far more sensitive uh, for roll we're not going to want to do that we want to get full analog movement out of the stick now here's the meat and potatoes of this bit of software the curve fantastic so what the curve does just apply a little bit of curve there now when you move over to the left this is the uh, physical axis the physical position on the joystick when you move over to the left it gradually starts to move with low sensitivity increasing the further over you go let's run the configuration and see how that looks okay so dead center move it over slightly to the left we've moved about an inch there and it's hardly moved at all on screen and then increase the speed towards the, the full extent of the joystick and the same for the other side that gives you far greater control in game uh, you need to play with the setting so that you're happy with that but that can make make a big difference when you especially with flight assist off when you're trying to control the ship and it's it just bounces all over the place i'm sure if you've tried it you'll know what i'm saying it's far too sensitive with flight assist off you're just dealing with thrusters the computer doesn't get involved at all so you really just want a very quick spurt of, of power to the thrusters and you're going to move and you're going to continue to move until you do the reverse to stop it, to break it from moving on that particular vector. So here's a quick combat demonstration. You'll notice that I'm using two sticks. They just lend themselves well to a space combat simulator. Now your right hand is dealing with your rotational thrusters and your left hand is dealing with your movement. Think of it as a first person shooter. And in that regard, you can apply the curves to your right hand to give you the sensitivity you need to correct the rotational movement. But on your left hand, it almost needs to be digital. You need to be able to apply massive spurts of power to those thrusters to get control. So let's get the joystick set up with the target command GUI for Elite Dangerous. We're going to start with the roll axis, and apply a bit of center dead zone, around about 10 works well for me, and a curve of 4. Moving on to the pitch, again about 10 for the center dead zone, and a curve of 4. And you're moving left and right. Again, a nice dead zone and a curve of four. The rudder paddle could be used for forwards and backwards thrusters, which only work in normal space. They don't work in super crews, but it gives you that fine analog control. The throttle, on the other hand, if you're going to use the throttle for full range, in other words, it will go forwards and backwards you're going to need to put a pretty hefty dead zone on because there's no feedback when you're in the mid position if however you're going to use it as a forward only throttle you don't need any settings there at all just leave it as default Lateral thrusters on the D-pads. Uh, you may only need a very small amount of dead zone, if any at all. No curves necessary. Rudder pedals definitely need a centre dead zone and a decent curve. Okay, if you're running dual sticks, 
the left hand stick needs to have a much more sensitive setup still got a fairly large dead zone of 10 um, with a curve there of 2 same for the Y axis and the rudder uh, this is with flight assist on with flight assist off we can use the zoom function and take it up to 3 and test different levels of curve to see what works for you but you really need to be applying power so as you move left there you are very quickly getting 100% I've left in the description below a copy of my dual joystick setup. This will obviously only work with two T16000Ms. It applies different curves and sensitivities to the joystick according to whether flight assist is on or off. So that's it. I hope the video was useful. Any questions or comments, pop them below and I'll try and get back. And uh, good luck. Thank you.